souvenir programs here. Just wrapped up season three that really didn't have many souvenir programs in it. I just figured out how to download my older videos and photos. That's why I showed that 54 Seals episode. I shot that back in April. And I have one more from April that I'll show later on. But until the holidays, that's it for programs. So season four will be like season three. Mostly autographs using only photos from my phone. So it's a good time to do a show on Elmer Singleton, a.k.a. Smokey. He was in that 54 Seals scorebook with a short bio and a cool photo. Now you know a little bit about him and what he looks like. So now 70 years later on, we can see how his playing days ended up and how many team jerseys he could have acquired while playing in the three greatest decades of baseball. That is, if they let you keep your jerseys, which they didn't. So we'll follow Smokey through just a few of the teams he was with in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. He actually played in 1938 and 1939, but... There's no stats, but Smokey was there. He knows. He's been around. So let's see where he's been. Who? Bert, Elmer, Singleton, nickname Smokey. Pitcher, MLB debut, 1945. Played seven seasons in the majors. Pitched on four big league teams, but in total, pitched 24 seasons of pro ball from 1940 to 1963. He signed with the Cincinnati Reds after a tryout in 1938 and pitched for their Class C team in the Pioneer League for 75 bucks a month. Compared notes with the other boys on the club and felt he was underpaid and was not offered more, so he quit. Went back to the Farm Bureau League where he started out. That's where he was spotted by Yankee scouts in 1939 after they watched him strike out 16 batters and hit a grand slam. The Yankees put Elmer on their Wenatchee Chiefs, Class B of the Western International League. Elmer said, I was listed as a pitcher, but... It was seven years before I lived up to the listing. He also said, I was a fireballer, and I could throw a baseball through a brick wall any time I could hit the wall. I started out a throw-and-duck pitcher. He started 1942 with the Cubs AAA affiliate, the Portland Beavers of the PCL. As season end was returned to the Yankees. But with World War II raging and teams depleted of players, the Yankees went from nine minor league teams to only five. So Smokey went and pitched for the Brigham Peaches in the Utah Industrial League. After the war, back with the Yankees, they would trade him mid-season to the Boston Braves, where he didn't pitch much. Same for the 1946 season, for that matter. So the Braves sent Smokey to the Pirates in a trade involving Bob Elliott coming to the Braves. Good deal for the Braves, because Bob would be the 1947 NL MVP and led the Braves to the pennant. Bad trade for the Pirates, who would end up trading Elmer to the San Francisco Seals in 1949, and it wasn't long before he was off to the Toronto Maple Leafs, a St. Louis Browns AAA affiliate. But the Seals would buy his contract outright and trade Elmer to the Washington Senators for Steve Nagy. And Dad has Steve Nagy's autograph right next to Ty Cobbs and Tom Heath's for some reason on the same cut. I've been meaning to ask him how come those three autographs are on that same page. Pop got Elmer Singleton's autograph a few times at Seal Stadium, Sometime during the Rainier's 55 championship season, you got the one in the thumbnail there and a couple of autographs on the SEAL scorebooks that I showed in season two. As far as baseball cards, Elmer has a 49 Bowman in his Pirates uniform and a couple of Cubs cards from Topps and his mother's Cookies cards as a Rainier notes his nickname, Smokey. In 1954, the SEALs were in the playoffs. Elmer shut out the Hollywood Stars, but lost the elimination game to the Oakland Oaks and after the season was traded to the Seattle Rainiers and would help them win the 1955 PCL championship with Elmer going 19-12 and 12 with nine shutouts and was picked at PCL All-Star. Elmer Singleton was accused of throwing the spitball. He said it himself, sure, I throw the spitter. Gives the batter one more thing to think about. His teammates told how he did it. He chewed juicy fruit gum and would spit bit between a gap in his teeth onto his thumb. Smokey never put his hand to his mouth. Had a great season with the Rainiers in 1956, going 18-8 and eight and led the league in ERA. So he was bought by the Reds, but traded to the Cubs. Now, he's 38 years old and seven years removed from his last big league game. And in his big comeback, he's pulled in the fifth with arm soreness, which would have to deal with his entire career. He missed most of 1957 rehabbing after having arm surgery to remove bone chips. But Elmer started back 1958 with the Portland Beavers and would get a couple of call-ups with the Cubs in 1958 and again in 1959 before spending the rest of his career bouncing around in the minors, first with the Fort Worth Cats, then the Sacramento Solons, then it was off to the Vancouver Mounties, and later the Spokane Indians, 
and help them win the 1960 PCL championship because Elmer had so many, you know, he played so long. It was hard to list out all the teams he played for. So for time's sake, I just named those few. He retired at the age of 45 and would coach under Mel Parnell for the Rainiers in 1963. Then he would also uh, be a coach on the Tacoma Cubs. When asked his duties were as a pitching coach, he said nothing. Yet the players he coached praised Elmer on his knowledge and gave him credit for their success. He would work in the offseason as a carpenter and sold cars. He was born, raised, and passed away in Ogden, Utah. But unlike his Mormon parents, farmers, who never left the family farm, Elmer played ball all over the country, then served his country in the military, came back and saw more of the country before returning home to Ogden. Elmer Singleton is in the Utah Hall of Fame. So, it's 1952. And Elmer Smokey Singleton is once again a San Francisco Seal and is pitching against the Sacramento Solons. He already sat down the first 18 batters. And he gave up a walk in the seventh, but through 12 innings, was yet to give up a hit. Seals manager Tom Heath said after the game, that was the best pitched game I ever saw. It was a hit in the 13th that cost Elmer the PCL record for hitless innings pitched. It was the Solons, Johnny Ostrowski, who was a former Pirate teammate of Elmer's that got the hit to win the game for the Solons. Funny thing is, is earlier in the day, Elmer took some of his old Pirate teammates out to lunch, including Johnny. Elmer said, I should have fed him chicken bones. All's fair in love and war.